Hello, everyone. My name is Michael, and we are so glad that you are here tonight. If you are new to Hope, welcome. We have been praying for you, and we believe it is no accident that you are here. Um, and speaking of prayer, if you are in need of prayer right now, you can head on over to lutheranchurchofhope.org slash prayer hyphen wall. There you can submit prayer requests, but also while you're there, you can also pray for others. And then you can click on that, I prayed for this button, to let them know that you prayed for them. Also, Hope Kids, after today's worship service, you can head on over to lutheranchurchofhope.org slash hope kids. There, there's another great video for this week for Hope Kids. And then, of course, we are getting excited to blast off this week. Literally, we are going to eternity and beyond as VBS starts tomorrow morning. It is going to be a fantastic two weeks here, and we are just so excited about that. And stay tuned during Hope 360 for more announcements about VBS, Hope Kids, uh, Taste of Hope, and so many amazing other things. Worship is about to begin. Thanks for being here. Welcome, Hope. It's so great to have you all here. Why don't we stand and give a wave to those around us as we uh, get started with worship here this evening. It's so great to have you. We're going to sing and we're going to worship together.
we continue with worship, let's stand in the love of God. We lift our praise and our worship to Him. We sing this together. When darkness tries to roll over my bones. When darkness tries to roll over my bones. When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Oh, we sing, My Fear. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love Shame no longer has a place to hide And I am not captive to lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind together in prayer. And we thank you that we can stand here as one church and we can stand in your love, your love that is always for us, that is for each and every single one of us. God, allow us to embrace your love, embrace your plan for our lives, and embrace the truth shared in your word. God, let us be listening closely to hear your voice and experience you tonight. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. This is Hope 360, your weekly look around Lutheran Church of Hope. I'm Mark Brandt. And I'm Haley Shepherds. The waiting is finally over. Vacation Bible School kicks off this week for our campuses in West Des Moines, Ankeny, Ames, and Grimes with our Waukee and Hope Elam campuses starting the following week. On Monday, we will begin our two-week trek into Planet Hope. We will learn and experience the Bible in memorable ways by exploring five awesome Bible stories through worship, music, song, action, skits, crafts, snacks, and games. It's not too late to get signed up for either week as a kid or a volunteer. For more information or to register, check out lutheranchurchofhope.org slash VBS. On July 24th from 3 to 9 p.m. at Waterworks Park, we will cap off two weeks of VBS with an exciting cross-campus celebration, Taste of Hope. All are invited to enjoy free food, music, 
games, giveaway items, inflatables, mini golf, laser tag, lawn games, food trucks with extra entrees and desserts available for purchase. In addition, the Creative Arts team will have several stations to bring even more vibrance to the event. First, we're creating these awesome Jesus batons that we'll be waving in the air during the concert and during our worship service. Then we will have a large creative art piece that everyone can partake in. And we will also have two live artists on stage during worship time. If you'd like to sign up to help volunteer at the event, we'd love to have you. Just visit our website. A reminder that we are also hosting a Taste of Hope 5K in Hope West Des Moines parking lot that morning, as well as a golf outing at Beaver Creek Golf Course on July 22nd. More information on how to get registered for both of these fun events is on our website. And as a follow-up to our Taste of Hope golf outing, Hope Sports and God's Future Players are offering a youth golf clinic for kids age 11 and up on July 31st. At Willow Creek Golf Course, all kids are invited. That was your 360 degree look around Lutheran Church of Hope. We're glad you joined us and welcome to Hope. Yes, welcome everyone. We are so glad that you are here. Whether this is your first time or your 101st time, we believe it is no accident you are here and we have been praying for you. As you just saw during Hope 360, there's a lot of exciting things coming up in the next two weeks. But also beyond that, there's still so many exciting things to come as we move in later into the summer and into the fall. And if you want to learn more about that, just go to lutheranchurchofhope.org. Check out our website. There's always those exciting things coming on. And speaking of special announcements, I'm going to invite Pastor Jeremy up for another special announcement. There are times, there are seasons in life uh, that uh, are celebratory and also come with some, uh, some heartache with it as well. And so uh, there's a part of me that doesn't want to make this announcement, but I'm also so excited for, for Levi and his wife Carly, uh, who was standing right here. Uh, Levi has been serving for five years, uh, over five years now at Hope and has served in so many different capacities. He has been the, the backbone here at Sunday 5 p.m. services for quite some time now. He is the backbone leading worship for our revived ministry. God's called him to do extraordinary things uh, here at Hope. And Levi has accepted uh, a call to be the worship leader at Gloria Day Lutheran Church, where his wife uh, Carly is also on staff. So they are able to then do ministry alongside of one another uh, and so uh, we want to take this moment to celebrate Levi, acknowledge the incredible things that God has done, and to pray for him on this next endeavor because this uh, is something that we all do together. And so we couldn't be more excited for you, Levi. We couldn't be more thankful for you and for all the things that you've done. Uh, and so as we get ready to, to send him, and he, he still has two more songs he's got to lead. So not yet. Uh, would you join me in a word of prayer? God, thank you. God, I thank you for Levi. I thank you for the ministry, God, that you... Uh, we're doing in him and through him before he came here, the ministry that you've done in him and through him while he's been here, and God, the ministry that you'll do through him uh, at Gloria Day. God, we're thankful that this community gets to, to hold on to, to Levi and his wife Carly. God, that they'll just be uh, across, the, uh, across the street, so to speak, at Gloria Day. And we, God, we pray for that community and the amazing thing, God, that, that you're doing there. And God, while it's hard to experience transitions, God, we also know that it's in the transitions that, God, you're moving, and we thank you for that. So God, bless Levi, bless Carly, bless them in their work and in their ministry, but most importantly, in their marriage and in their lives. And we thank you for that and pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Can you help me in praising God for Levi? And we'll continue on with the Bible reading. Our Bible reading tonight comes from Mark chapter 10. I invite you to follow along in your Bibles or take out your phones. You can search for that or follow along in your Bible app. Mark chapter 10, and we'll be starting with verse 13. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never receive it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. I invite you to join me in a word of prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. 
Amazing God, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for the so many people that are here right now, here in person or joining us online, here to worship you. And just also the many, many people who are getting ready for these two amazing weeks of Vacation Bible School so that everyone can hear, all these amazing kids can hear that you love them just the way that they are, that they can experience being loved here as well. Please encourage us to reach out to those around us as well so they can also experience that love and to know your presence, not just in the kingdom of God, but here right now in this moment. God, we just give you thanks for all those amazing gifts that you have given us. And God, we continue to pray as your son first taught us the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our worship service will now continue with our offering. We will all hear an offering of music. If you would like to give to the Mission of Hope, you can do so online by clicking on the green My Offering button. Or if you're here in person, you can also um, donate on your way out. There's secure boxes in the back of the worship center. Thank you for being a part of what God is up to here at Hope.
said, let there be light. And there was light. There we go. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for coming to worship. Uh, you saw that video clip there was the, the kind of the promo video that we did for Vacation Bible School. And if you haven't heard or if you couldn't tell or if you've kind of missed it up until this point, we have this thing that we're doing starting tomorrow. It's called Vacation Bible School. You may have heard about it. We've only talked about it for like every single moment of every single day for the last month. And some of you are saying, okay, we get it. You're doing Vacation Bible School. You can quit talking about it. With all due respect, we're not going to quit talking about it. It's kind of like my kids are with my wife, Bridget, and I. It's like we're going to keep on talking about it until you finally give in and say, I get it. I got it. I find, I'll, I'll do Vacation Bible School. It's like our kids are like, Mom and Dad, can I have this? We're like, no. And they're like, can I? No. 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 And then finally, we will say to our kids, if we finally say yes, will you quit bugging us? And they're like, yes. And so then we give them what they want. And then they go away and they quit bugging us. That's what we're going to do with Vacation Bible School. Not because it's anything about us, but because it's about you and it's about the kids around you. 
We had this incredible opportunity last year to do Vacation Bible School differently than we'd ever done it before. Because of the pandemic, because we had to do the whole thing where we had to be apart from one another, we weren't able to do Vacation Bible School in person. And let me tell you, it was absolutely extraordinary. And so many of you experienced it. We heard from people all over, not the nation, not just the nation, but from people all over the world that talked about what an incredible thing Vacation Bible School was last year. And it was. And God blessed it. And God moved through it in extraordinary ways. But let me tell you how excited I am to be able to have this room filled up with kids again. I can't tell you how excited I am for tomorrow. I'm like a grade school kid ready for the first day of school. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight. And we want to tell you that uh, if you haven't gotten uh, signed up, or if you haven't gotten your kids signed up, there's still time to sign up. Sign them up. They can come tomorrow. They can come next week. Next week it's either in the morning or in the evening. It's not too late to get your kids. If there's a kid in your neighborhood that you can't stand, get them signed up for vacation Bible school because nothing changes a person like Jesus Christ. And so get a little Jesus in their heart. And we want you to do that not because we want people here. We want you to do that because it's good for, it's good for their soul and it's good for your soul as well. This Vacation Bible School isn't just for kids. It's not just for people who are like 8th uh, grade or younger or ninth grade or younger or whatever, the eight, or like 6th grade or younger. It's the junior shepherds that are the ninth graders and younger. It's not just for them. It's, it's, it's for you. And I don't want to tell you to sign up to volunteer because we're worried about whether or not we're going to be able to have enough volunteers. We'll be fine. We will be fine. We operate under this mindset all the time at Lutheran Church of Hope that we believe that God's going to provide. That if the kids show up, that God will provide enough leaders. But here's why I want you to sign up to volunteer at Vacation Bible School. Because you'll get just as much out of it as the kids will, if not more. And you'll start to act like a fool for Jesus Christ. And you'll have the most fun that you can ever imagine ever having. And our theme this year is to eternity and beyond. Outer, outer space theme. And it's just going to be... It's going to be wild. It's going to be so much fun. And, I, and it's just going to be, it's one of those things that happens at Hope. That it's just, it's just special. For whatever reason. For whatever reason, God's moved through Vacation Bible School at Lutheran Church of Hope in ways that we could have never a anticipated. And I feel like I'm kind of like riding this high because last week my family and I, we were at uh, family Bible camp at, at uh, Lutheran Church, uh, the Okaboji Lutheran Bible camp, easy for me to say, uh, Okaboji Lutheran Bible camp. We were there last week and now I have two weeks of VBS, so I'm going to have three weeks of Bible camp right in a row. And it's just, it's amazing. It's awesome. And it's one of those things that you just don't want to miss it because it's holy. God sets it apart. God moves in it and God moves through it. Don't miss the opportunity of what's going on right now. Get involved in, in, in any and every way that you can. There's never been a person that I've talked to over the 12 years that I've been at Lutheran Church of Hope that's gone on the other side, especially adults, especially people who kind of felt like, you know what, so they said that we, we, they needed more volunteers, and so I volunteered. There's never been a time where one of those people says, and I wish that I wouldn't have done it. What I hear is the, the, the reverse. There's so many people that, that come, and they, and they volunteer, and they, they, they get to be a part of it, and they say, you know what, I'm never going to miss it. We have people, more people than I can count, that they take their, they, they schedule their vacations from work around vacation Bible school because something happens. Something happens when we encounter something that's just, that's bigger than anything that a human being could do on their own or human beings could do on their own. But when we have this encounter with the God who created us, it's at the center of the story, of the Bible story that you heard uh, Michael read for you just a few minutes ago. It's a story in the, it's in the middle of Mark's gospel. 
And it's a story that Jesus, uh, of, of Jesus encountering some kids. And it's a story that it's really easy to pass over. It's really easy to skip over. It's really easy to, to hear the story. It's like Jesus has some kids that come up to him. And Jesus' uh, disciples want to get rid of the kids. But Jesus says, let the children come to me. And we kind of feel like this story, that this passage in the scripture, should be something that's reserved more for a children's sermon than anything else. Because it couldn't possibly have anything to do with my life uh, right now and right here and, and today. But what I want for us to be able to do with one another this evening is to, is to pause and to step back and, and, and to not just see this story as something that's for kids of a certain age, but as most definitely. With, 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 with no hesitation, it's absolutely 100% for any of us, we're, whether we're three years old or uh, 103 years old. It's interesting, uh, in, in Mark's gospel, Mark's gospel, when we, when we hit it in Mark chapter 10, we're literally uh, more than halfway through Mark's gospel. Mark's gospel is shorter than the other gospels, shorter than Matthew, shorter than Mar- uh, uh, Luke, shorter than John. Also, Mark's gospel doesn't start out like Matthew and Luke do with the the story of the birth of Jesus. And it doesn't start out the way that John's gospel starts, where John ties the birth of Jesus way back to the dawn of creation. No, Mark's gospel starts in Mark chapter 1 at the baptism of Jesus. And when Mark's gospel starts, you just kind of hit the ground running. Like you're, you're shot out of a cannon and things are just moving and things are going. So by the time we get to Mark chapter 10, the, uh, The amount of people who knew about Jesus was at an all-time high. The amount of people who had heard about the things that Jesus had said and had claimed was was at an all-time high. The the people who had witnessed the the, the things that he had done, the the miracles he had performed was at an all-time high. The people who had experienced the healing that he had to offer was was at an all-time high. And the crowds were just following him wherever he would go. The Gospels even said that he literally almost hardly had any time to, 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 to rest. The people were pressing in on him so much and so we get to Mark chapter 10 and we can almost give the disciples a little bit of a pass that when the the parents brought the children to to Jesus that they would probably say hey we, we just don't we just don't have enough time these parents they bring their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them and just a really fun side note to this Remember back in the day, about 20 months ago, when we would do communion the first Sunday of the month, and we'd actually line up in lines, and we would come, and we'd get a piece of bread, and we'd dip it in the wine of the grape. Remember those days? We'll get back to those days. And I can't wait where we can do that, and we can come forward and receive communion. But when you have a child that hasn't done first communion yet, we'll say, please bring your child forward so they can receive a blessing. This is what the parents were doing for their children in Mark chapter 10. But the disciples, they scold the parents because the disciples don't want to to have the children bother Jesus. And I think sometimes we think the disciples are kind of like more like Mr. Wilson and they think of the kids like Dennis the Menace. But that's actually not the reason why the disciples want the children to get away. No, at the time that Jesus lived in the first century, people looked at children much differently than the way in which we look at children in our culture. Today, we, uh, most parents would move heaven and earth for their children, but at the time of Jesus, children really, until they were of a certain age, they, they had no value. They had no place. They, the, the first thing, and we're going to go through five very practical things that we learned from the story. Lesson number one is the disciples shooed the children away because they thought that they had no value. And so often we fall into the same thing, that we determine value based on what we do. Based on what we bring to the table. And children didn't have value until they could do something that would contribute to the family. And so why the disciples wanted to get rid of the children and wanted the children not to bother Jesus was because well, Jesus should be concerned with more important matters. And I wonder, I wonder how many times 
all of us kind of maybe feel the same way about ourselves or about somebody else. That maybe we, we think about our, ourselves and we think about our faith and we think about God and we think about God's love and we think about the person of Jesus and we think about all of that and, and we think that if we were to be the one that would come and, and ask Jesus of anything that, that maybe we'd be bothering him or, or we'd be burdening him and, and he shouldn't waste his time with something, uh, someone like us because well, we feel like our value is pretty insignificant. Or maybe we feel that way about somebody else. Or some other group of people. We say, yeah, it's great that the, the church does all of these things. And it's great that, you know, we, we say that we, that we love people. But, but really, there's got to be some kind of boundaries on it. And there, there's got to be some, some limits on it. Or, or, or maybe somebody's gone through something. And, and what they've done, we, we, we feel like we don't agree with them. Because we don't agree with it, we don't value it. And because we don't value it, we kind of want to dismiss that person and think that maybe we shouldn't be burdened by them. How dare we? The reality is, is our value isn't determined on what we do. It's determined by who and whose you are. People's value isn't based on our perception of what they do. Or our perception of what they bring to the table. Or our perception of how much they have to offer. Their value. And we need to hit this and we need to hit this again and again and again and again and again again. And again, is that every single person who has ever graced the face of this earth's value is based on the fact of the reality that they've been created in the image of God. When God created you or when God created them, God was not disappointed. God did not somehow, in some way, think that there was no value there. In fact, God saw so much value in you or so much value in them, whoever them is for you, saw so much value in them that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to go to a cross, to die, to be raised from the dead because of how much value you have. Because of how much value they have. So Jesus, we go back to Mark chapter 10, and Jesus sees his disciples that are trying to shoo these kids off, that are scolding the parents for trying to bother Jesus with something that they perceive, someone that that they perceive to have so little significance, and Jesus actually gets angry with them and responds with this call that so many of us have heard so many times and know so well. He says, let the children come to me, don't stop them. Don't let anything get in the way between these kids and me, Jesus says. To the disciples and and to us. Don't let anything get in the way of our kids and Jesus. I talked about this just a few weeks ago. And I'm not talking about it again as a way of somehow thinking that, you know, like uh, being angry or anything. I just think it's important to remember because I think sometimes, especially when we look at kids, but also we need to realize that we're all God's children. And so we could say that don't let anything get in the way of our kids, but we can also say don't let anything get in the way of us and Jesus. Because it's so easy to do that, isn't it? I think sometimes it's so easy to allow second order things to become primary. I think about our kids and I think about all the things that we want to do as parents because we somehow think that if we don't put every single uh, opportunity in front of them or, or if they ever were to take a break, then somehow we're going to rob them of the opportunities that they have in life. And so we do so much of that that we don't allow them to have any space in which they can allow the most primary thing, their relationship with God, be most primary for them. 
and we can reduce it just to the kids, but I think we need to take an honest look at it with ourselves as well. How easy it can be to say, you know, it's just so busy. It's just so there's so much to do. Or, you know, there's these opportunities that are in front of me, and I just need to seize the opportunities because these are the things. These are the things that are, are going to be the things that are going to provide the life that I want or are going to give me the life that I want. Listen to what God says through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 40. It says, the grass is, grass is going to wither and the flowers are going to fade. But the word of God will stand forever. There are a lot of temporary things of life. It's not life's fault. But it's God's word. It's God's promise. Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You've heard it so many times. That there are three things that are going to last forever. Three things. Only three things that have the power to last forever. Faith, hope, and love. Jesus, Jesus says it this way in Matthew chapter 6. He says, don't store up your treasures in things that aren't eternal, but store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy them and thieves can't break in and steal them. Because where your treasure is, that's also where your heart's going to be. This last week at, at family camp, it's really an incredible experience. You have a week where you're with your family. You have uh, these counselors that are like college age that they kind of hang out with your family and they also hang out with your kids. And it's just this extraordinary experience. And so your kids have these people that they look up to. It's just wonderful. And there was this family there and the, the family was called, the, it, they were the McMillan family. They're from around Madison, Wisconsin. We had met them about six years ago when we were at camp, and, and so we got reunited with them this, uh, this past week, and it was so much fun. Uh, one of the great things that we were able to do is my son Trey and I were able to go paintball, and so the McMillans, they have three kids, two sons who are, uh, one's college age, one's just out of college age, and then they have a daughter who just graduated from high school. Her boyfriend came with as well, so there are four kids in their, in their group, and so the three boys and their dad, Ted, and Trey and myself, and then two, one other dad and his son, we were all going to go pay, play paintball with one another. Trey wanted to play paintball because he'd never played paintball before. I wanted to play paintball because I wanted to shoot my kid with a paintball. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kind of. I did shoot him, though, but he shot me too. But we had this incredible experience where from where the camp was to where we played paintball was a 35-minute drive. And so we had over an hour worth of car time. We had two hours of playing time. So we had all this time where my son Trey was surrounded by these young adult men who just absolutely poured into him. And it's like literally when, when he looked at, looked at them, it was just kind of like, you know, you, you know how it is when, when, when a younger person looks at somebody just almost like with stars in their eyes because they're just so enamored with how, how cool and how incredibly loving that that's how he looked at these McMillan kids. The, night, the last night at camp, there's this incredible experience that you have where we go and do a campfire after we've shared communion with one another. We're around the campfire and everybody has the opportunity, only if they want to, to share kind of what God's been doing in their life over the course uh, of the week at camp. And so during this time of sharing, all three of the McMillan kids, they all have the, the microphone and they kind of share what, what God's been doing, what God's been up to, and, and kind of what they've learned throughout the course of the week. And all of us uh, parents of younger kids kind of look at this group of kids who our jaws hit the floor like, oh, only if our kids could turn out half as good as them someday. It was just like, my goodness, it looked like they got it so right. And so the mom, their mom, grabs the microphone later and she said, you know what, I just want to share something with all of you parents. Throughout the course of the week, a lot of you have asked us how we uh, got our kids to be like this. You want to know what she said? She said, we didn't get them to do this, God did. Both of her sons uh, were able to play soccer in through college. Her daughter will be able to play soccer in college. And she said, you know what, you got to realize is there's always going to be another soccer game. There's always going to be another baseball game. There's always going to be another band performance. There's always going to be another show choir performance. There's always going to be another theater show that the kids can be into. But there's only one God. 
So we made sure that we carved out time every week. That nothing would get in the way between the be we could do the best that we could do to make sure that nothing would get in the way between our kids and the God who loved them. I think how important that is for all of us. There's always going to be another thing to do at work. There's always going to be another event to attend. There's always going to be another whatever it is that fills up your calendar. But there is one God who loves you, who longs to be in a relationship with you. Jesus says, let the children come to me. Let all my children come to me. No matter what age you are, whether, no matter where you're at in life, let the children, don't stop them. And then Jesus goes on in Mark chapter 10 because he says, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. We hear that, and I think sometimes we say, okay, the lesson in that is that uh, we should have like a, a simple or a simplistic kind of faith. It's not what Jesus is getting at. Childlike faith is not simplistic. It's defined by its depth. Here's what I mean by that. It hasn't been dinged up, injured, and knocked around by life. Childlike faith is defined by its, by its trust. About daring to believe and thinking that that belief is able to hold you. I remember when our kids were uh, at the age where we turned them from uh, rear-facing child seats to forward-facing child seats. And I remember when we flipped them around and they could actually see where they were driving, where we were driving, it was like... It was like they're on a roller coaster. Like it was the coolest thing ever. They went from crying in the car to wanting to be in the car. And it was the most wonderful thing. And when we would go on curves, they'd go like, they literally go like, woo! And it was super fun. And then all of a sudden one day, we were driving. And we were driving on, if you are from this area, you know what I'm going to talk about. If you're online, I'll try to describe it the best that I can. But there is... Uh, Interstate 80 that heads east from the western suburbs of Des Moines and it, it starts to head downtown and as you're heading east there's one, uh, you can stay straight to go into the middle of the city or you can veer right to take 35 south, you know where I'm at right now, you can take 35 south and that takes you towards Kansas City or you can curve to the left and that's 3580 which is going to take you up towards Urbandale and Grimes and it's going to shoot you out then eventually towards Ankeny. You know where I'm at? And that curve that you take that takes you north, it's kind of like, like a bridge that goes. And, and we, they would go on that curve all the time. They thought it was so fun. And then one day, one of my kids, when we were on that curve, shouted out. They said, Mommy, be careful. Mommy, be careful. And I almost got to a place where our kids didn't want us to drive on this bridge. Why? Because for some reason, they started to wonder if we are going to lose hold of the steering wheel. If they would trust, if we were going to, could trust if we were going to make the turn or not. I wonder how many times in life we kind of feel the same way with God. Like we've been going on this journey and we've been going on these turns and we've been going on these roads and we've been doing all of these things and we've never second guessed whether or not God was going to be able to make the turn or not and then all of a sudden something happens and all of a sudden we start to wonder, God, are you going to be able to make the turn for me? Or is your hand going to come off the steering wheel? And here's what you have to know. And here's what we have to remember. As hard and as difficult as it can be at times, is God is never going to let go of the steering wheel for you. His hand is always going to be exactly where it needs to be. And he's never going to miss where he needs to hit. He's never going to miss the mark. Because you want to know what the truth is? You're the mark. You're the one that he's after. You're the one that he wants. You're the one he wants to be in a relationship with. Jesus says, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Why? Because they're in a place where they're living in a place of trust. Of not having to live life in response to the things that have marked and, and wounded us. Not for a minute am I saying that we gloss over those things or pretend that those things haven't happened. We need to be honest about those things. But Jesus says, look at the children and look how they come to me. I think about it 
when you watch a child jump into the arms of their parent and they jump with, with, without any type of hesitation or reservation. And no matter how off balance their parent might seem, they jump and they're just certain that their parent is going to catch them. I wonder what it would look like if we were able to get back to the place where we were able to jump the same way. Let the children come. Let them be held by me, Jesus says. Don't stop them, for the kingdom belongs to them. And then Jesus goes on in Mark chapter 10. For I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Now, i got to hit a quick pause here. I need to hit a quick pause here. And the reason I need to hit a quick pause is because I think sometimes we can hear this and we can hear this somehow in a way to think that God is kind of, or Jesus is kind of, he's threatening us. Like this is kind of more of a threat to say like if you don't get it right and if you don't do the right things and if you don't believe the right way and if your faith isn't in the right spot, then if you don't do those things, then I'm going to withhold my blessing or then I'm going to withhold my love or then I'm at, heaven forbid, I'm not going to allow you to, to experience eternal life. That's not what Jesus is getting at in this statement. Those kind of statements doesn't point to a loving God, and here's what I know about God, is that he's loving. I think sometimes we can almost think that uh, we would think that heaven is something that's incredibly hard. Eternal life is something that's really hard to obtain, and, and hell is something really easy to fall into. But I believe the reverse to be true. Because God sent his son Jesus into the world. But what Jesus is wanting us to do in this and what he's offering and inviting us to do in this is to rediscover the joy. Rediscover the joy in the eternal things of life. In the things that are going to last. To be able to, to be okay with who we are and what God's doing with us and in us. Lesson number four of this incredibly short but profound passage in the middle of Mark's gospel is to rediscover the joy in the eternal things of life. Don't miss them. Don't miss them. How tragic it would be to get to the end of our life and look back and realize we missed the most important thing. God loves you too much for that. He really does. God longs to be in a relationship with you so much that he doesn't want you to miss this. To rediscover the joy. To rediscover the love. To rediscover who he is. And and to be able to put your faith and to put your trust in those things. That's what these next two weeks are all about. It's not about kids singing songs and doing dances and and crazy light shows. It's about God. It's about pointing to the salvation and the eternal life that God has to offer us so that our kids won't miss it. But make no mistake about it, it's so we won't miss it either. We always say about uh, VBS at Hope, we say we'll do everything short of sin to get, get kids to come. And we really, we will. We'll do anything we can to get kids to come. Why? Because we want them at an early age, as early of an age as possible, to discover the eternal things of life. To recognize that their story has been written and the ending for them is very good. And because they know it ends well, that they can live life in freedom and they can live life with some assurance and they can live life in in a way that, that allows them to know that God has a plan and God has a purpose and that he's good. And the world that they live in, it's good. Because he is. Because God is good. I mean, he just is. And look, I get it. I know sometimes how hard it can be to to 
kind of like settle with that. I mean, it's not like anything that any of us do makes us immune from times in life where we're like, man, <laughs> I just, I, I know that God is good, but man, it just, I just, I struggle with that right now. And if that's where you are, I just want to say to you that, that that's okay. It's okay to not be okay sometimes. But even when we're not okay or when it isn't okay, it doesn't change that God is good. And he calls you his. I love the way that the disciple John writes it. Same guy that wrote the Gospel of John, he writes a series of three letters that are at the very end of Scripture, the very end of the New Testament. And John says, see how very much our Father loves us. Everybody say love. Everybody say love. See how much our Father loves us. It's a love that's not based on feelings. It's a love that's not based on performance. It's a love that's not based on us. It's based on him. See how very much our Father loves us, John writes. The one who had spent three years of his life with Jesus, the one who literally had a front row seat to, to the way that Jesus acted and the way that Jesus lived and the, the way that Jesus encountered people. Can you imagine how, how, how powerful and how, how poetic those words must have felt as they're coming out of John's mouth and they're coming out of his heart as he was writing those words down because there wasn't a part of John that would have ever doubted that for a minute. And here's the most important part about this, is John wasn't writing for a children's sermon. John wasn't writing for a group of kids. John is writing this letter for people who are trying to figure out how to do this thing called life. And so John wants these people that are trying to figure out how to do this thing called life, does it sound familiar? Do any of us have it figured out fully? So John says to you, see how much our Father loves us because he calls us his children, and that's exactly what we are. And nothing gets to change that. Nothing gets to separate that. Paul will write about that in Romans chapter 8, that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor things above nor things below, not even the powers of hell, not our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow could ever separate us from the love of God that comes through Christ Jesus our Lord. Karl Barth, one of the greatest theologians of the last couple centuries, wrote incredible volumes of, uh, of things about God and about how to understand God and, and all of these incredibly uh, deep revelations of God. And Karl Barth was asked one time to, to, in the summation of all of his work, you've heard this before, in the summation of all of his work, what's the most profound thing that he's ever come to know about God? And you know, I don't know how Barth responded. He says, here's the, 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 the deepest revelation that I've ever had about God. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. There is nothing more primary, there is nothing more important, there is nothing more significant, there is nothing more life-giving to come to understand that Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you and he wants to be in a relationship with you. He wants you to experience it. He doesn't want you just to know it. He wants you to experience it. He wants it to go from your head and have it transfer into your heart and move through you to the world around you. That's what this passage is all about. It's not just about Jesus and some kids and some parents and some disciples who get it wrong. It's about you. It's about me. And it's about God's love for all of us. Don't miss it. This is going to be an incredible uh, couple weeks, but it doesn't stop with VBS. It continues on every single moment of every single day of every single life. 
God's love is for you. So I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to sing, and we're going to sing about that love. We're going to sing about that truth. And then we're going to get ready, and we're going to hear VBS music 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the next two weeks. You'll have it in your heads. You won't be able to shake it until next July. And that's exactly the way we want it. Amen? Amen. Let's sing.
living with us. Hope it's been great to have you here. We want to remind you that we'll have prayer partners available. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn it over to our host. Yes, thank you so much for worshiping with us this evening. That was such a wonderful message from Pastor Jeremy. Sometimes the simplest statements can have the most depth to them. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That is so great, and we are so excited to share that message with all the kids that are going to be here over the next two weeks for VBS. We hope all of you have a wonderful week, and will join us again next weekend. Thank you. Righteousness don't need to question the reason. Uh oh, uh oh. Come on, move it. You're the wind, the fire, just to see. Smile. We'll always provide, provide. Don't you try to worry about tomorrow. God will lead it. We will follow. Follow. So what a kid gotta do? What a kid gotta do? Don't we talk? What a kid gonna do?